Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we have a brand new deck tech for you, and just as a quick heads up, this is not a budget deck, although I do think it should be fairly easy to find substitutes for those expensive cards. But before we do that, just a quick reminder to please click subscribe if you enjoy my videos. I'm currently growing the channel and I'm getting very close to 1,000 subscribers, so it would mean the world to me if you could support me. And today we have a brand new deck tech for you from March of the Machine. It is Omnath, Locus of All. And if you don't know what he does, for one white, one blue, one Phyrexian black, one red and one green, it's a legendary creature, Phyrexian Elemental 4-4, which says, if you would lose unspent mana, that mana becomes black instead. And at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card if it has three or more colored mana symbols in its mana cost. If you do, add three mana in any combination of its colors and put it into your hand. If you don't reveal it, put it into your hand. So there's quite a lot to unpack here. There's a lot of stuff we can build around just like we mentioned in our preview video for this card we can build around just fun cards that are three colors or that have three colored pips in them that's kind of what I'm gonna be going for in this list for the most part I've built this around cards that I either enjoy or own I really love Alara so there's a lot of cards from those kind of sets in here I've also built it around a multicolor theme since I think that fits this quite well so a lot of cards in our deck are gonna care about multicolored there's a couple of big X spells because that's gonna work really well with the first part of his ability and we do have have some classic charms in there because those are going to work really well too. However, the thing that makes this really good is that it's going to add three mana to your mana pool. So it's going to give you a really big bump. You can play some really big stuff on turn four if you get this out on turn three. So we do have a few ways to ramp into it on turn two. It should be awesome to drop some huge heavy hitters very early with this. So we're going to start off with our creatures and we're starting off with Anafenza the foremost. Anafenza is a really decent threat for three mana. We're getting a fairly beefy creature that's going to buff our other creatures when it attacks. The plus one plus one counters can actually be a little bit relevant in this deck as well, which is nice. And then, of course, it also has a little bit of hate stapled on, which is something that's never bad in Commander. Stopping cards your opponent's control from going to the graveyard can really help. Next up, we have Armada Worm. It's a little bit vanilla, but it does bring a lot of stats to the table pretty early on. If you reveal this with Omnath on turn four, then you can immediately drop this, and that's a very good early threat. Bane, Lord of Darkness, I really like in this deck. We're probably going to be taking quite a bit of damage since we're a little bit on the slower side of things which means that he will often have indestructible but really we're playing it for the other ability because it can either let us draw more cards or it can just allow us to put some of our heavy hitters onto the battlefield both of which we're pretty happy with. Chromantico is great because with Omnath out we can play this on turn four assuming we've met his requirements and then you can instantly put it on Omnath to get a huge threat and if they do deal with that this is going to still stick around and be quite a relevant creature so it's very good in this deck. Pelagi Wayfarer has a little bit of anti-synergy with our commander since it doesn't have three colored pips but the multicolored convoke clause it brings is going to be really good in this deck particularly since we have a couple of ways of making tokens general ferris rokirik is going to be one of the best cards in the deck this is just going to constantly pump out four fours in this deck which is going to be difficult to deal with for our opponents pretty quickly hero of precinct one is another of the ways we're going to make tokens in this deck with him and general ferris rokirik it should be pretty easy to convoke out our multicolor spells jensen carthalian is going to scry a lot unfortunately scry doesn't work as well as it could with Omnath, seeing as it's not an upkeep trigger, but it's still a nice effect to have to make sure we draw gas. And then of course we do have a few five color cards, which are just gonna give us angels, which is fantastic. Knight of New Alara is going to pump our creatures quite a lot in this deck. On average, it's going to give something like plus three, plus three, which is really, really good. Maelstrom Archangel can come down very cheap with Omnath, and then it can just cheat all of our expensive stuff into play. Maelstrom Wanderer is a great way to give haste to our creatures, and also double cascade is really nice. We can actually hit this as early as turn five with a decent Omnath draw. Primeval Spawn is really expensive, but again, we can get it out earlier than we would be able to usually. And when we do, it's going to bring a lot of friends with it. So that's really solid. Not to mention that it's also a 10-10 Vigilance Trample lifelink. It's nothing to sneeze at. Ramos Dragon Engine is going to be great in this deck. It can come down again really early, and then it should be easy to get counters on this and get a bunch of mana off of it. Retaliator Griffin is a cool old Alara card that I found in my binder. I think it's going to be pretty sweet in this deck especially when we get to copy it which I'll mention later but dissuading people from attacking you is always nice and if they do attack you this is going to get really big. Rien Angel of Rebirth is going to be a must kill in this 
attack because otherwise we're just gonna get all of our multicolor creatures back when they die. Shannid Sleeper Scourge is actually really good in this deck. As I was building it, I found that I had a lot of legendary permanents, so this is just going to draw us a ton of cards. It's actually gonna give menace to a lot of our creatures, which is nice. Sea Drino is a card that I've always loved back from its time in Standard, and I have the 30th anniversary version, which is really cool, so I can't wait to play this in this deck. Tarak Dragon Claw is gonna give all of our big creatures trample, and it's nice that it can come in with flash. It's just a pretty solid card that also happens to hate a bit on blue decks. Two-headed Hellkite is one of the best things we can hit off of Omnath because we can then just cast it for three mana and immediately draw two cards, which is fantastic. Yidris Maelstrom Wielder is one that I really like in a lot of decks and it seems really fun here. If you can get to connect with it, we're gonna be able to make some really, really big plays. Sakama Primal Calamity is a card that can actually net us mana in this deck. If we hit with Omnath, this is effectively only costing us six, but if we have more lands in play, we can tap them and then they're all gonna untap. Zangief, the Red Zyklone is one I've been trying to play for a while and I think it's gonna fit really nicely in this deck. It's just a fun card that's very difficult to deal with for your opponents. It does get a bit worse if you're in a meta that has a lot of treasures, so do keep that in mind, but it's still gonna eat up a creature every turn and if the opponent doesn't have many creatures in play, they might be forced to block with something good. Next off, we're moving on to sorceries. We have Beck and Call, which works really, really nicely with Omnath. It meets Omnath's requirements, so if you actually draw it with him, you can then immediately cast it for just five mana, at which point you're making four flyers and drawing four cards. Those flyers can also help to convoke your cards with Falaji Wayfarer, so very, very nice. Debt to the Deathless is a really good finisher since we're often gonna have mana left over and we don't actually lose that mana thanks to Omnath. We can just save it up for a huge Debt to the Deathless late game. Kaya's Wrath is a good board wipe that synergizes with our commander. Lava Launch is gonna work really well with our commander and if we can copy it with a card that we're gonna talk about later, then it's even better. Ruinous Ultimatum is always a good card and when you can get it for four mana, it's even better. Supreme Verdict is another excellent board wipe that works with our commander. And Villainous Wealth is another fun finisher that synergizes very well with both clauses on our commander. Moving on, we have Instance. We have Absent Charm, which gives us removal and card draw in one card. Band Charm is really flexible. We can get rid of an artifact or we can deal with a creature pretty permanently or counter an instant spell. Bedevil is flexible and works well with our commander. Crackling Doom also works really well with our commander. Obscure Charm can give us some nice recursion because we do have have quite a few good multicolor permanents that cost three or less. And then the other mode was counter an instant or sorcery or destroy creatures can also be really relevant. Saltai Charm is really good removal that can also be decent card draw if we need it to. Unite the Coalition does almost everything and it is really efficient when you pair it with our commander. This can actually do a ton of stuff for us. Void Rain is another good piece of removal that can't be countered and synergizes with our commander. Moving on to artifacts, we have the Mana Rig, which is a really interesting one because it's going to give us a bunch of Power Stone tokens. Now we don't have that many ways to use the power stones, but we have enough that this should still be decent, and you can also just use them for its own effect. Threefold Signal is a card that I love, and I've been trying to put it into a deck for a while. It's gonna be really great here, because it's going to let us copy quite a few of our spells by paying the replicate cost, and since we should have quite a lot of mana, thanks to Omnath, that should be doable. Also, the Scry 3 isn't irrelevant either, because it allows us to make sure that the top card of our library has three colored pips. Tome of the Guild pack is gonna add some mana, but more importantly, it's going to draw us a card every time we play a multicolored spell even though it is a little bit expensive. Next up, we have Maelstrom Nexus, which is a really fun card. Mana Cannons provide some nice removal and late game, it can just finish off the game if people are low enough. Team of Ascendancy is gonna draw some extra cards since we have a lot of things that have power four or greater. The Haste also comes in handy. Tribute to the World Tree should be drawing us a lot of cards in this deck, but even when it doesn't, it's going to make all of our creatures bigger, particularly all of those little tokens that we're making. Widespread Thieving is a really fun one. We're gonna get to hide something hopefully big under it and then we're gonna get treasures every time we play a multicolored spell, which should make our future spell casting easier, and it's gonna allow us then to play the card for five colored mana. Next up, we have Planeswalkers, and we're actually playing five of them here. We have Dakon Shadow Slayer. I really like this guy. He's very decent removal, and the Surveil too can be relevant with Omnath's ability since we can get closer to guaranteeing that we're gonna hit something with three colored pips. Jared Carthalian is obviously gonna be really good in a multicolored deck. It can pump our creatures pretty well, and it's also going to create some tokens that can synergize as well with some of our other cards. Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh is an absolute beast and it's just gonna give us so much value and it's just a fun card in general. We can often hit something really strong off of this and it can come down really early in this deck. The same goes for Nicol Bolas Planeswalker, just more decent removal that is going to allow us to mess with our opponents. This deck actually runs quite a lot of removal. Finally, we have Sarkin and Broken, which can make dragons, draws cards and add mana. What else do we need? And the very last card in the deck is one that I feel is very close to my heart. It is Invasion of a Lara, the new battle 
crystal, it fits so well in this deck. The cascade is almost always going to hit something good. And then when we flip it, which we should be able to do because we have a lot of big stuff, we're just going to get an absolute mountain of value, even though we occasionally might whiff on the artifact clause. I'm just really excited to play this card in Commander. Well, there you have it. This has been our Omnath Locus of All deck tech. I can't wait to play this card. Are you as excited as me? What do you think? Are there any things you would change? Any additions that you think I missed? Please let me know in the comments section below. I read all comments and respond to all of them too. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe. It really helps the channel. And until next time, take care. Woo!